Hello and welcome everybody. Today I'm going to be looking at a game by Nakamura Sumire. She recently became a pro and she beat the record for the uh, youngest uh, person ever to become a pro um, at the age of 10. So uh, this is a game uh, she played against Yamayuta. I'm not sure if this is an exhibition game or part of her Shinsho Dan uh, match, but anyway, let's see what happens. Uh, from what I understand, it's a no Komi game, uh, so there's a small handicap in her favour. So Nakamura. Sumire is white, is black. And we start with a strange opening. I've not really seen much of this. This is a sort of uh, micro or a, a mini Chinese opening and it's high. So if this d12 stone was placed at d11 that would be the uh, high Chinese opening, and then it would be normal for white to maybe approach on this side, invade at 3-3 or play uh, to protect this corner. But since this stone is a bit further away from the star point, it's uh, normal to invade uh, on this side. So black has several different options. You could uh, you could just completely ignore it and uh, approach the other star point. You can back off. You can you can kick and jump. And there are several uh, AlphaGo games that look like this. You can see in the AlphaGo Kojia match uh, in the Wujen Summit. Um, I think AlphaGo had this a similar position to this as Black, and played played here. Uh, Nakamura uh, just played the simple solid move, and uh, Yama played the active move that is very popular these days because Afgo always plays it. Um, so descending down here is a bit unusual. So connecting and descending would be be normal. Um, but this is also another standard Joseki option. Uh, it can lead to fairly complicated fights. <coughs> so white can cut first and then has to live in the corner. Since this stone is quite far away from this shape it seems uh, it, it seems reasonable for black to play like this, and there is an AlphaGo self-play game that is very similar to this, uh, but uh, this stone is one space lower. Um, it's it was in the uh, AlphaGo self-play game one that was uh, reviewed by Fan Kui. so you, I think if you go to his uh, if you go to his YouTube channel, you can probably find that game there. Uh, in that game, AlphaGo played here and then attached. So, however, Iyama pulled the stone out directly, which is still very severe. So, there's no immediate way to capture these three stones, which means that. Um, it's going to lead to a fight. It looks really risky for uh, for white to connect because it's all uh, the sh the shape looks very bad. But white can just about get out. In which case, uh, these three stones uh, are weak enough that white can make a fight out of this. So the next few moves are all forced. Uh, white has to jump. 
and unfortunately black can't capture these stones because well that's an Atari on these two stones so that that doesn't work so the next few moves are all forced now what has to be careful about a shortage of liberties here but at, at least white playing here is center so white can try to uh, force black low if white just jumps out and black just jumps out it doesn't seem like there was any reason for white to pull out these stones because black has gotten uh, made uh, good territory here and these stones are still very weak and these these black stones are fairly healthy as well so what has to keep up the pressure attaching is the is the strongest move here so it's not that easy for white to fight because of the shortage of liberties but white has to has to anyway um, well, this peep is just uh, preparing to sacrifice these stones, and the peep will be a good exchange if these three stones get captured later. For now, it's forcing. So white honeys. Now black has to do something. Black can't just let uh, let herself get surrounded, and th this would be a, a disaster. There are there are there is a shortage of liberties thing here. So, for example, this attachment is a bit of a shape point. So if if white just directly tries to cut this off, well, then black can connect and capture these three stones. So that's okay. But for now, white can play here and and capture black in return so that's not really good enough um, so this is the normal move and in fact I think this is this has become a standard Giuseppe I've seen it played many times uh, in professional games um, post AlphaGo in other words in the past two years or so um, and I think this is the standard professional move uh, uh, it pretty much captures these three stones because if you try to connect now then after pushing well you can't play here because that's that's you can't escape out of this if you capture then well there's not you can't really escape out of this either I think well, you might be able to, but uh, the, the white's shape is a complete disaster. Um, so, th so this move works. Um, however, when I checked with Leader Zero, it was it was saying the game was even up to this point, but it really didn't like this move. It, it thought capturing these three stones wasn't good enough. Um, taking Goto here. And that actually black should try to live here and just keep crawling and try to take Sente and invade a, um, one of the star points. And that there's no need to capture these three stones, uh, especially since white has already made this peep. And this is a relatively solid black group. So as long as black can live with this group, it's okay. So I thought that was fairly interesting. I don't think I've seen any pro game where where uh, they played her. Okay, Yama invaded fairly deeply. Um, this is normal, though it does feel fairly aggressive. Like you would play in a handicap game. I mean, I, I'd think that playing around here is fairly normal, and 
when black tries to expand the Moya, then you play the alpha go move here. Uh, especially as uh, white has the ladder, so this is going to work. And uh, one normal variation would look something like this. Um, something like this. And just try to create a living group here. And reduce the value of this wall. As long as there is a living group here, then uh, white is okay. Um, some other variations include honey on the outside, in which case white honey is on the inside. Uh, black pretty much has to connect here. If you try to fight like this, then the problem is that white has the ladder. Oops. White, white has the ladder and can capture this stone. So you pretty much have to connect and then white connects and then white lives fairly easily and there's still a cutting point here. Um, and uh, Maybe black has to defend around here. Then white has sente again. So that's, that's not very good. If you honey on this side then oh, White just creates a living group, uh, living group over here. So these are the uh, the variations that we've learned after AlphaGo. And um, there was also another AlphaGo game which looked like this, I think. But uh, you have to see some of the AlphaGo self-play games. Um, alternatively, I think. Attaching directly is fairly normal, too. Um, I asked Lula to zero, and it suggested this move, but it seems it seems a bit strange to me. In any case, this is this is still a standard move. Uh, so this is a standard Joseki, and. Once again, many variations have been developed after AlphaGo. So the idea is you you want black to respond, and then you can uh, just force black low, and then you you get good shape uh, as uh, you get all the shape you want. Um, <clears throat> whereas black should really be trying for more, since black is super solid here and has an extra stone. So black really wants a fight. So, so black can fight with this crude move, and actually it looks a bit like white is overplaying here, given um, how solid black is. But oh well, uh, Iyama is the strongest player in Japan, so he can do what he likes. So attaching here is a Tsuji. But just from a shape point of view, it does not look right to me for uh, white to be trying to fight here because one way or another, black is going to get very, very solid on the up the upside. Uh, and however many moves uh, white gets here, this this black group is going to be completely fine. So it's not so valuable to... And it's not going to be easy for white to live either. Um, so Nakamura shows that she knows her stuff. Um, we can see that in the lower left corner, she she played the Joseki uh, pretty much perfectly, and uh, and here too, she uh, she's fighting. Uh, She's playing all the right moves. So honey. Now the normal move would be to retreat here, and then when black, when when white descends, I don't know. Black has several options. Could play like this in the game. Could cut. I think this this might make more sense. Um, Nakamura played here, which I've never seen before. 
but it's taking away, it's making it more difficult for white to make eyes. So my shape instinct is to play something like this, but that is fairly soft and it's not black black does have plenty of solid territory. Yama played here, which looks fairly unreasonable to me. Um because after cutting it black is so solid here that it looks it looks extremely strange for uh, for white to be fight, uh, fighting around here this stone just seems like it's probably going to just be be dead with no real potential of using it um, white should be able to live with no problem but black should be able to get sente uh, in the game I think Nakamura made a big mistake and uh, Leela Zero thinks so too seems she was trying to attack the whole group um, so her idea was to use this wall to, uh, to drive these white stones into making life over here, but um, didn't quite work out because white lived um, easily enough, and then this wall didn't really do anything. Um, I found this move fairly inexplicable. Leela Zero thought so too. Why not just block? Uh, there is a cutting point here, so you need to defend, but black also needs to defend, and then you can get out. Seemed a bit strange. Uh, playing an empty triangle. But Leela still thinks it's good for white. Um, so it's it, Leela. Starting from this move, Leela th thinks that this position is good for white. So there's still some some bad agi here. So if white gets a stone round here, there's some danger. But it's essentially fine. Another problem is that actually this is a connecting these stones has is becoming a bit more of a threat now. Uh, with this cutting point as well. So even though these uh, three white stones are in terrible shape, they still uh, make it difficult for this black group to make eyes. So the position is a bit uncomfortable for black now. So so black has been forced to, with this huge wall, black has just been forced to make a bit of territory on the side, which doesn't look good. So, so the game is is definitely better for white now. Uh, that was assuming that uh, it was with normal Komi six and a half Komi. Uh, if the, if it's a no Komi game, maybe it's still balanced. So things have essentially settled down now. Um, this white group is fairly weak. It's not got any eyes. This white group, well, it, it can make an eye on the side. It's probably it, it's not hard to make an eye in the center. So it's it's not alive, but it's it's not that weak either. You could try to think of somehow making a double attack on these two groups, but on the other hand, it's hard to see what profit you'll get because if you invade here, it's not a particularly big area of the board anyway. Um, in terms of where the biggest areas of the board are right now, well, if you take a step back and, and look, um, the whole right side is is open. When you have four fours, the the corners are uh, invading. The corner is very large, and perhaps the top side is particularly large right now because of because uh, black has a wall here. And this group is weak. 
which means that black can pressure uh, this group a bit. So it seems natural to to try to develop the top side. So my idea would be to to just try to develop the top side like this. And it's not easy for white to invade around here because um, because this white group is weak. Though I would also seriously consider invading one of the three three points. Either one would do. Nakamura played this move. In terms of a game plan, it makes sense because it seemed starting from this knight's move, she was trying to push this white group towards this very solid wall um, to make use of the wall. But I think against someone like Yamayuta, this this group is going to be hard to attack. So, so, so this is is a good move, but um, I think it might be a little bit too early. So white takes the big point. This is a critical point. You have to play. You have to reduce the this moyo. So now it becomes a bit awkward for black. Um, it, it doesn't look like you're going to be able to kill this or, or even attack this white group that severely. Uh, you can probably create a big wall of, of black stones around here, but it's not clear how you're going to use that wall to make territory or to attack any group. Even if you have a big wall here, it's not going to be easy to attack this group. Uh, and one thing to, to consider is that this group is not uh, isn't that weak either because there there is always an escape route so what I can play here and here and well if you capture then white is going to be alive and if you connect well there is a bit of a danger of that white might connect here and then your black group isn't safe either. So this white group is has is healthier than it looks. So it is now a bit awkward. But once again I seriously consider invading one of the three three points. Nakamura pushes. So I wrote that there should be some way to use the weakness of this white group and this white group to make a double attack, but it's difficult to see any way to profit. So I thought that taking territory seems best here. Um, but when I checked afterwards with Leela Zero, uh, Leela Zero agreed with Nakamura and said that this stone can be attacked. And Leela Zero wanted to invade here. So this is a fairly deep invasion point. It, it's clearly ready to either try to kill this stone, frankly, or to maybe attach at Q17 or approach at R14 to attack the corner as well. In the game, Nakamura invaded here which is a sort of in-between move. It doesn't affect either stone so much. Um, it's a sort of calm move which doesn't want to start a, 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 a critical fight, I suppose. This black stone is going to be able to settle here and it's going to be able to live fairly easily, and uh, white is going to be attacked and under pressure here, but it's you're not putting white under that sort of critical pressure. So white defends the corner first, and um, black has to come back here. And there are some cutting points it's, uh, if white gets that two-space extension. Here, then it's going to be very 
a very difficult game for black. Black really, well, neither side has much territory right now. Though, to be honest, this white stone is in serious trouble. Uh, this, this white group is not alive. So, it's not easy to see what to do here. If you just jump out, then th this, I, I, as I said earlier, black can easily get a huge wall in the center here by threatening this group. So, that doesn't look like it's going anywhere. So, I looked at this for a bit, and I thought that if, if it was me playing, I might actually just attach here and submissively connect on the second line. Just aim for something like this. I thought it looks okay for white. And actually, Lila Zero likes this. Um, in the game, Yama made things rather interesting. He played a rather ridiculous move. Okay, so this exchange is forcing. And then he played here. So I think at this point, Lila Zero said it was uh, about 60% in White's favour. So uh, that was assuming a 6.5 Komi. So Nakamura is still doing fairly well here. But then after this, Lila Zero said it was back to 50-50. And that this was not a good move at all. But this reminds me of that moment in Hikaru no Go. Uh, if you've seen it, where Sai is playing Toya, uh, uh, is playing Akira Toya, and Sai plays a very strange uh, move in the center, and Akira thinks, that's not the best move, that can't be the best move. Uh, he's playing Go at a much higher level, he's just testing me to see how I respond. And I think that's the spirit of this move. Um, it's good shape, but uh, it doesn't look like it can really work if if Black finds the right way to refute it. So this is a challenge, I think, that Iyama has set for Nakamura. And, well, let's see, I think Nakamura did pretty well here, uh, at least initially. So, black is extremely solid here. So, as long as black can settle this stone, uh, there are some serious weaknesses in this white shape. So, so what to do? I think um, this attachment looks looks quite nice. Um, You just black just needs to get a little more shape before uh, before punishing white. Um, of course, in this shape, black is too solid just to accept capture on ring one stone. The, this is a huge corner compared to what black has got. Black ideally wants to capture everything. <laughs> um, when black invaded here, black uh, gave white some profit because white got this move. So white, black really needs to, to get a lot out of this. Black already accepted very little territory from this wall over here. So this, this is a nice move, nice sequence to get more liberties, get more shape. And you can descend here later. And then you cut. So Lila Zero said that this is the only move. Uh, white is playing nonsense here. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I'm a blocked. <laughs> and extended. And Lila Zero says it's nearly 70% in Black's favour now. With white, this just doesn't work for White. So, if Black, if Nakamura had a little more confidence, I'm sure she could have almost ended the game here by by just extending here. This is the only move. These white stones have nowhere to go. 
even if they live, um, Black is uh, going going to be able to get out, take Sente to get out here, and then these two stones won't won't be very healthy. But I guess sometimes it's it's fairly intimidating playing against uh, s someone you know is very strong. So you can just you can be worried that you just you miss one move and your the game will be over. Um, but this this black root is fine. It can it can uh, get out, and it it has reasonable ice shape as well. So this is a, essentially a capturing race or something between these white stones and these black stones, and it doesn't look like it can end well for white. Instead, black played a very slow move, just making eyes. But I think. It might even be better just to try to get out with this 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 group. Um, just in terms of the size of a move, this is a very small move. All it's doing is making maybe one eye for black and removing one eye for white. In terms of territory, it's it's far too small. So leader zero says it's back to fifty fifty now. And I think uh, when I saw the result, I thought that this this move wasn't quite good enough. Um, it's natural to try to ask uh, if you can get this ex if you can force white to respond here, and then you c you can make shape. Then this then what? There's no way white can live inside here. But uh, white doesn't have to respond. So, white played here in the game, and then it's awkward for black. So I think it was better for black to play a bit more crudely here. You have to play more forcefully, and just try to capture all, all the white stones. So there's there's no move like there is in the game to squeeze black. So this way. This way white gets several stones on the outside and has some chances now. But to be honest, it still looks like there's, it's very hard for white to get out of this position. White has already sacrificed a lot here. So white is still in trouble. But there is a cutting point here. And now comes a critical moment, which is a matter of reading. From what I can see, and from what Leader Zero can see, uh, Nakamura could have ended the game here and captured all of the white stones just by blocking. It looks complicated to this cut. It looks like you, these stones at the top are all surrounded and they might be dead. But, well, you can capture. That's forcing. This is forcing. And when you play here, the white group only has two liberties, and you have three liberties. So this is game over. <laughs> this is all black's territory. Um, I couldn't see a way for white to get out of this, actually. Um, So like white has to do something like this, and then it still doesn't look good. This 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 white group is in trouble as well. So so I think if black blocked, then I think Nakamura may. It, it, this was a winning chance for Nakamura. That would have been amazing. Uh, a nine-year-old girl winning against the Japanese number one. So maybe she needed a bit more confidence in her reading. But she was satisfied just to capture these two stones. But uh, White escaped disaster. Here. So 
Hmm, I wrote that the end result looks slightly better for white to me. I meant compared to the initial position where... Compared to this position, white did manage to get out of this position, save this stone, and solidified the corner in the process. Um, black did get a reasonable profit to capturing several stones, but I thought that it seemed slightly better for white because um, this group is, is a bit healthier now since these two stones are being threatened. But now, and there's some edgy on the outside. But now I look at it again, I think, I'm not sure, I think it's it's fairly even. So white plays here, Lilo zero said it's 60% in white's favour. It's still a very difficult game. So this is all very settled, so... The right side is obviously the biggest area. And there's some funny things going on in the centre because there is this Atari that White can play. So it's not clear who is more solid in the centre, White or Black. Um, what Black can probably descend here and Sente later. Um, so Black has Sente now to, to invade the right side. And then the question marks will be what happens to this corner, and what happens here, and then what happens in the centre. And also, I suppose, whether black gets to capture these two stones. Uh, black can always uh, capture these two stones. So, this looks like a good move. Standard move. And you clamp, and white has to connect. And the Yammer is playing very solidly, it's very confident, very calm. Just capturing two stones. But black's result is fine. I mean, now black is almost certainly going to be able to get Q18 in Sente. So what does white do? Um, white Atari is Lila Zero didn't like this move. Lila's thought that this was far too slow, um, and it's back to fifty-fifty. Just playing any other big move was better. Or, for example, Tiger Mouth. Okay. I suppose the point is that white has this move in centre, so that well, black doesn't really have a threat around here anyway. So Atari here, you're only threatening to capture one stone, which you could have captured anyway by that sequence I mentioned earlier. Okay. Hmm. So black played here, it's an interesting move. So Lila Zero said that this was actually a critical point where black had to play a few forcing moves and then play something like in the game. I wouldn't know where to play in the centre here, there's so much space, and this looks like a good move, you're threatening, uh, you're reducing the territory here, and you're threatening to capture these few stones on a large scale. But Leader Zero said that it was important to, to connect here, and ask, ask White how to respond. Uh, if white defends, then you extend, and there's still some possibility that you can harass this entire white group. And just getting this extension is a very big move. And if white doesn't respond... Um, I don't know, where would white, white play it? You can... I suppose you can capture these two stones in the centre and and maybe threaten this this group as well. So, but that's a, a very subtle point, and I'm not sure I understand uh, the meaning of that 
that. You know? and this, uh, I personally can't really criticize this move. But uh, Yama agrees with Leader Zero that this is a very big point. So attaching. So I didn't. I wasn't sure if this was correct. Like maybe you should try to just take territory. And, but I suppose that this white group is fairly solid, as I mentioned earlier, because of the edgy of pulling out these stones. So maybe there's, there's, it's not worth it to lose the tension in the center. Um, so Leo Zero said that it was still um, fairly even at, in, at this point, maybe even in Black's favor. All Black had to do was just connect these stones up. And then White would have to defend somewhere, reduce somewhere in the center. And Black, but Black would still have several points in the center. Here. And everything would be connected, and actually black would be doing well. Uh, black just needs to make sure black gets this descent in center, and it will be center because this white group is is under pressure. However, Nakamura went after these two stones, which which ended up very very badly. So it's, it's clear that black has captured these stones, but maybe you can see that these these, do, these stones are not are, are a lot bigger than than these. So the situation is is desperate now. Uh, black connects back these. Even these this group is looking like it's a, in a bit of trouble. And at this point, it's game over because these stones are captured, and it's much bigger than what what, uh, what Black has captured here. So if we just go towards the end, before make before reviewing the situation, so what did I write here? Uh, Overall, her play seemed calm and solid. Um, it didn't seem like she was that nervous playing against the top player. Uh, no, no bad moves. Um, but uh, it's, she seemed to lack a, a little bit of confidence in the critical moments in the fight at, at the top. Uh, and towards the end, towards the end game, a sense of uh, play in the center was not was not as good as Iyama's, of course. Uh, Iyama didn't seem to start any particularly complex fights, uh, where, which he's he's known to excel at. Um, so. But I wouldn't say he he played softly at all uh, against uh, uh, just because she, uh, just out, out of kindness. So Nakamura did play very well. Um, I wouldn't say she had a chance to shine. So I, so that, there was nothing particularly brilliant um, uh, about her play. Except maybe how she refuted uh, Yama's elephant jump. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see, but I'm sure we'll hear more about this child prodigy, prodigy in the future. So her refutation of the elephant jump was excellent, and uh, she had several winning chances uh, at the top. She maybe just needed a bit more time or confidence in her reading. Yeah, if we go back to that point. So if she just played a bit more confidently with this move and extended. Well, or if she, she blocked here and captured 
everything on the top. So Yama was just overplaying her. And yeah. So when faced with a unusual situation, she did she did well. Uh, just making shape here and, and punishing uh, Yama's overplay. Uh, she knew her Joseki in the lower left and uh, in the upper left. Um, so it seems like we have a, a solid new pro to uh, rising new pro to watch out for. Thank you everyone. Uh, thanks for watching.